resting heart rate and heart rate variability, what's optimal. So first we're looking at a plot of uh, the relative risk uh, for all cause mortality against the resting heart rate in beats per minute. And what we can see is that a resting heart rate of about 45 beats per minute is associated with a maximally reduced all cause mortality risk. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, what's my data? So I've been tracking my resting heart rate uh, with a fitness tracker for almost two full years from August 2018 through June of 2020. And what we can see is that I started, uh, uh, so each blue dot corresponds to the average uh, resting heart rate for that month. So uh, we can see that I started with a resting heart rate uh, around 52 to 53, and then uh, I came down, went back up, and then went back down again, and then went back up again. So uh, there's a noticeable trend here that my resting heart rate has been lowest in the winter, and but highest in the summer. So what's going on with that? Well, in the summertime, I suffer from uh, a hay fever, so allergies uh, to grass and pollen, and that increases my resting heart rate for from May until July, at least that's what happened in 2019. In 2020, I was better able to manage those symptoms and my resting heart rate went up less. So um, that's the trend for me. But what about in the published literature? Are there seasonal trends? So what we're looking at here is data from 92, 92 about 92,000 subjects um, and resting heart rate for uh, women in the green line and for men in the blue line. And what we can see is that uh, the resting heart rate is actually lower in the summer for this cohort of 90,000 plus subjects and highest in the winter. So this data is basically opposite my data. And I, I just included that to illustrate that epi, ep, data from large epidemiological studies are important. But what's more important is seeing how your data uh, agrees with it or not. And if it doesn't, well, you've got to figure out you know, why and how, to, how then to optimize it. So based on all-cause mortality risk, my resting heart rate uh, data is close to optimal. Uh, so you can see it, my 2020 data, my average resting heart rate is around 47, 48. But I didn't include how resting heart rate RHR changes during aging. So let's have a look at that data. So resting heart rate increases then decreases during aging. And I've included data for two different studies here with basically the same trend. Um, so we're looking at the average resting heart rate on the y-axis plotted against age. Um, and what we can see is that uh, resting heart rate peaks at about 50 in both uh, cohorts and then declines towards the end of life. So if you remember my data, my resting heart rate was actually, I started at a relatively high level and then over the past two years, I've reduced it. So how do I know that I'm, I didn't peak uh, and then I'm on the slow downward trend for lower resting heart rate uh, towards the end of life? How do I know? So with that, we can look at the heart rate variability for more insight about my uh, cardiovascular health. So first, what is heart rate variability? Uh, so uh, the simple definition is it's the variation in time in between successive heartbeats. So if your resting heart rate is 60 beats per minute, on average, your heart beats once every second, but it's not exactly once every second. Uh, some beats may be 0.9 seconds, some beats may be 1.1 seconds, and some beats may be exactly one second. So if you take the average of those three, sure, it's one beat per minute, but the time in itself is is different. The, so that's the heart rate variability. It's the variability uh, in the time in between those heartbeats. So we can see that illustrated here by that picture, and I won't get into the math, but um, my fitness tracker measures heart rate variability uh, with the RMSSD, which stands for the root mean square of successive dis differences between heartbeats. So the RMSSD, why is that important, uh, and how does it change with age? So it declines during aging, and First, we can see that here in a study of about 200 or of, of 260 subjects, the uh, RMSSD, which is basically heart rate variability, that's how they assessed it in this case, uh, it starts off at about 53 in young subjects, 10 to 19 years old, and then you can see it slowly declines for each age group until 80 to 99 year olds who then have a, um, a heart rate variability of 21. So it's significantly decreased heart rate variability with age. Uh, so these data were confirmed in another study a little bit bigger, 344 subjects. And uh, so again, the young adults are actually, you know, kids uh, too. Uh, so 53 um, heart rate variability, 53 milliseconds that also declined all the way from, uh, until 70 to 79 years uh, where they had a 19 millisecond uh, RMSSD. But then note that the 80 to 99 year olds actually had an increase to 30. So the authors of this paper uh, proposed the idea that having a higher heart rate variability 
then your age group may be a promoter of longevity. So these data are in relatively small studies though, 260 and 344 subjects respectively. What about in bigger studies? Uh, so in a study of 8 million subjects, um, we can see that data here. But first I wanna uh, note that th these data are based on Fitbit users. So uh, we may have a healthy user bias in that the data that I just showed you with the smaller sample sizes, these are people from the general population. Um, and you know Fitbit users are more likely to care about their health because they're buying a Fitbit. So they may be starting or have a higher level of fitness than the general population. So along those lines, we can see that the, the heart rate variability of the, the Fitbit users in this study at a young age, 20 to 25 years old, had uh, RMSSD, so heart rate variability values, uh, you know, 65 into the 70s, whereas the other studies had, you know, 53 was the high. So uh, there may be a little bit of a healthy user bias in this cohort. Nonetheless, we can see that heart rate variability uh, declines uh, through aging, you know, so, so from values, uh, you know, around 70 in youth all the way to around 40 in, in 60 year olds. So um, the low heart rate variability, the, the importance of that is also illustrated by the findings that it's associated with an increased risk for sudden cardiac death, SCD, and all cause mortality risk, ACM. So first, uh, this is a plot for the relative risk for sudden cardiac death in a, a, a group of 12 and a half thousand people. And what we can see is that uh, for people that had, that had heart rate variability, uh, variability uh, uh, scores, RMSSDs, of less than 18 milliseconds, they had an increased risk for sudden cardiac death relative to people who had higher than 29 milliseconds. So lower heart, heart rate variability, uh, potentially bad for sudden cardiac death. And then along those lines, uh, there was an increased all-cause mortality risk that had uh, RMSSDs of less than 8 milliseconds. So long story short, very low heart rate vari variability, uh, potentially bad for all-cause mortality and sudden cardiac death. Now these are values, very low values that you'd expect to see in someone who's very old. Uh, if you look at the Fitbit data, you know, the average value was around uh, 35, 40. So, uh, but it's also pop possible, you know, with an unfit sedentary lifestyle, lifestyle to have very low heart rate variability. So uh, having higher values for RMSSD as the measure of heart rate variability may be important for cardiovascular and, and, and health in general. Uh, so, and just to also illustrate, so I, I noted that uh, resting heart rate declines with aging and so does heart rate variability. So if you have a low RHR and a low HRV, that's worse cardiovascular CV fitness. So what's my data? How, you know, we started on this path to determine if, um, you know, my resting heart rate maybe peaked and now is on the towards the end of life trend. And we're using heart rate vari variability to try to elucidate more of the picture. So what's my data? So here's my data for the past uh, 23 months. Uh, and my fitness tracker uses uh, the RMSSD uh, metric for heart rate variability. So we can see, uh, you know, slowly uh, increase in, and with a you know, massive spike in the winter of uh, 2019 into 2020, but an increase over time. And when I look at the average, my average value in 2018, so August through December, my, when I started off, my heart rate variability, variability was 47.3. The full year average, 365 days for 2019 was higher, 56.2. And then for the first six months of 2020, I, I've been able to get it even higher at 61. And one way I'm doing that is by uh, you know, use better, better integrating rest, not overtraining, uh, monitoring the intensity and duration of my workouts, and all that collectively over the past two years. I, I guess I've been doing a good job based on my heart rate variability data. So just to bring back the aging data to illustrate um, the importance of my, my data and how it fits into the literature. So I started tracking when I was 45 years old and just based on the Fitbit users in this study, the average heart rate variability, the RMSSD, was around 38, you know, 40, somewhere in that ballpark. So already, even though my training and rest periods and all that stuff was uh, suboptimal at the time compared to where I am now, I was still a little bit better than the average Fitbit user uh, with you know my values around 47. Now, looking at my 2019 data and how it fits on this curve, we can see that um, compared to the average Fitbit user, my heart rate uh, variability uh, age uh, is, some, is equivalent to that of a 30-year-old, which is pretty good if you ask me. Uh, and then, but in 2020, I've also improved. So, um, you know, one, can, one could argue that, you know, relative to my chronological age, I've got the heart rate variability of someone that's closer to 26 years old rather than 45 year, years old. And I'd argue that may be one of the reasons why I have a relatively young 
uh, biological age as indicated by Levine's phenotypic age calculator uh, video. I have a video on that if you're interested, just check out my videos. So uh, collectively, my, eight, my reduced heart rate, uh, resting heart rate over time, but I, ha I have a reduced RHR over time, but an increased heart rate variability. So I'd argue that I'm on the right track. So the idea that I hit the peak for resting heart rate and now I'm on the slow age-related decline towards death, based on my heart rate variability data in combination with the resting heart rate data, I'd argue that that's not the case. So you can find me lots of places online. Uh, if you're interested, reach out. Uh, have a great day.